The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Greetings, programs. Happy holidays and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Matthew here, you there. And it is time once again for another holiday ornament hack. Now, you might remember last year we built the, uh, the world's smallest working Donkey Kong cabinet out of the old Hallmark ornament. This year, I really wanted to kind of celebrate more of that retro nostalgia because like any other kid who grew up in the uh, hyper-consumerist 1980s and 1990s, uh, the commercials that came on during the holiday season really kind of like strike those nostalgia chords for some reason like like the Oreo commercial with Santa Claus or or the Fruity Pebbles season's greetings in our souls yummy Fruity Pebbles in our balls I kind of want to pay a little homage to that by building a holiday ornament that sort of brings back those retro nostalgia commercials so that's what I'm going to do I want to build a little television set that is powered by the actual light string. So I don't have to worry about batteries or anything like that. I want to power it by the light strand and I want it to play vintage holiday commercials. And that's what we're going to do today. So from the top of the porch to the top of the wall now, dash away, dash away, dash away all. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired Designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So, this is a pretty typical strand of multicolored holiday lights, or as our friends across the pond call them, fairy lights. Yeah, we should verify that it still works, huh? It does work. You know, back in the day, when I was a kid, we had uh, these strings of lights, and if one of the bulbs burned out or you, or you removed a bulb, then the whole thing would go out. And that's because it was wired in series. But essentially, um, what modern uh, light strands have done, and it's not like a big technological leap, it was just the manufacturing just got cheaper, so they were able to do it this way. You know what, let me draw you a picture. Okay, so please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to paint it or to build it to scale, but this is basically a crude drawing of what's going on in here. You start over here with your plug, um, plus and minus. It's not a polarized plug, as you see, it, so it really doesn't matter. Alternating current backward and forward, uh, so it doesn't matter which side goes in which way, uh, the lights will light up the same regardless. Uh, we have, for the sake of argument, we have our positive going in this way, and we go into the first lamp here, and there's our little switching mechanism, which uh, is forced open and connects to the contacts for our incandescent bulb uh, there. Uh, but if the bulb is not in place, then the spring-loaded uh, contacts just push back together and current passes through, no problem. So then what we have uh, also connected to this first bulb is a second strand that goes to the third bulb. The first bulb connects to the input of the second bulb and they each just connect, skipping one all the way down the line. So two connects to four, three connects to five, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the end of the line. What I need to do now is I need to play around with it a little bit and see if I can effectively draw some power out of it using uh, maybe this little guy right here. I can run some wiring and um, perhaps, perhaps we shall have ourselves uh, a power source. So I've built a little uh, sort of a test rig, test plug. Um, essentially it is one of the light plugs pulled that out, I have just put in some bare wire just to connect to those contacts so that I can measure the voltage coming off of there. I expect it to be 120 volts, but you never know. 
Now, we are dealing with household current. We are dealing with 120 volts AC, 15 amps. Don't mess around with it if you don't know what you're doing. This is, a, I am a trained professional. I have shocked myself on household current. I don't know how many times. It is quite unpleasant and it can stop your heart. So let me plug that in. Hold on to your butts. Ah. Fancy. Lights are lit up and 120 volts here. So now I reliably have 120 volts that I can siphon off of just about any of these standard light strands. The Raspberry Pi requires five volts and two and a half amps. So I have this very common Raspberry Pi official power supply that provides five volts at three amps. That way I've got plenty of power to work with. Uh, but you'll notice that it has good old uh, dual prongs there, like so many of our standard North American outlets. And then on this end, it has a USB connector, which we're not going to use. We're just going to wire it directly into the Pi. But for the sake of aesthetics, I want to put as much of this into one piece as I possibly can. Now, before we take a look at the board, this is just basically how an AC adapter works. So we start with alternating current coming in to a general protection fuse. From the fuse, it runs into a transformer. No word on whether it's an Autobot or a Decepticon. From the transformer into a rectifier, which rectifiers are interesting because they take alternating current and they basically are just a set of check valves essentially they're diodes it's a you know diode bridge which basically turns the alternating current and doesn't let it go back in the other direction from either side forces it to go in one direction and then from the rectifier into a little bit of signal conditioning that's usually a, a set of capacitors and resistors um, that will just filter out a lot of the noise and make a nice little uh, dc signal going out moving on let's grab that board now I should be able to take that, uh, sandwich it with, you know, with a little bit of insulation there. I run the wire over here to the power in, put a screen on there and put it all inside a nice neat little case. And I think we're good. All right, let's go ahead and get Raspbian put on this thing. Okay, so let's get the screen set up on here. We'll just SSH into the Pi. Our installer script. There. Change mode. There we go. Number two. Let's do that one. Would you like the console? No. Would you like the HT? Yes, I would. Boop, boop. Reboot. Okay, so let's get the screen um, uh, soldered on here and then we'll be able to go from there. Okay, now let's look at the design of this thing. So we're going vintage television commercials. So of course, it's gotta be, you know, a vintage television. So here I've got uh, this uh, kind of mocked up here. Uh, it is just the main body here. Now, I don't have all the, like the fancy scroll work and everything like you would see on a console television back in like the 70s, early 80s. Uh, so I did the best I could. But maybe a 2.0 will like look at some scroll work right here along the sides, maybe like a little bit of Curtis Mathis kind of branding, you know, something that would make it look much more period. But a couple of little things here in the design. So this is basically it right here. So you've got, I got these two little sections right here. Now that's just gonna hold like a divider here 
between my uh, low voltage side, which is the Raspberry Pi and the screen and everything, and the high voltage side, which is the, um, the power supply. So uh, I'll have them physically separated, uh, air gapped and so forth uh, with a little uh, thing there. So that should all fit in there and then I'll print a top piece to kind of bring it all together. So let's get this over to the printer. Now, word about printing, uh, because I'm going for the vintage look, I'm going to be using some premium wood filament uh, provided by the Element 14 community. And so we should get a nice wood grain kind of look to it. And, and that'll, that'll satisfy my, my sort of vintage needs for right now. Anyway, so let's get that printed and let's see where we go. Okay, so the last thing I got to do software-wise, I've already stuck a whole bunch of uh, holiday commercials onto the Raspberry Pi, and I got to have someone to play them. Now, Adafruit has a nifty little uh, Pi video looper uh, script thing that they came up with a while back, so we're just going to use that. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the entire process of setting up this software right here, right now, but you can go in the show notes at element14.com slash presents, link in the doobly-doo. Got a full uh, full tutorial over there, uh, so that'll take care of you. But I'm just going to do this real quick, Rachel. Okay, let's clone it. My video looper slash install. Shell script. There you go. New guns and roses with Axl Rose spitting. Ozzy's black eyes and the bats that he's bitten. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. broken a string. These are a few of my favorite things. So now we just gotta change a few settings. So I've pulled the SD card out of the Pi, and we're gonna look at some convenient boot. Uh, code here. We want to comment that and open that. Uh, we want OSD to be false. Um, is random is true. Okay, here we go. File reader configuration home pi. All right, now got everything ready. Let's see if this guy will stand alone. Okay, I got some. Yes! Joy to the world! Okay, so we've got our little ornament here. We've got lights. We are plugged in, as you can see there. And. Plug it in and see what happens. Put on your butts. Contact. All right, got lights. Uh, it looks like it's booting. <laughs> yes! Love it. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh my god, it's so retrotacular. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I haven't seen some of these commercials in years. Oh my gosh. I am so ridiculously happy about this. This, oh my, it, it hits all the right nostalgia buttons for me. It, it's, a, it's an old school looking TV. It's got a little rabbit ears on there. It plays commercials from when I was a kid, uh, you know, the 80s up through the 90s. And <laughs> it runs off the light strand. It doesn't need batteries. It runs off the light strand and I love that. A couple of things, uh, the screen doesn't quite fit just right. I'll have to uh, 
I'll have to reprint um, the uh, the shell. I'll have to reprint the shell just because um, it's a 24 hour print because I printed it at such a really high resolution. Uh, so it did take about 24 hours. So I'm not printing another one right now, maybe next year. But uh, yeah, you can just kind of, you just kind of have to do a little jiggery poker. You get the screen, you know, placed in there just so. Uh, but it does more or less fit the right way. And it really, it, it, it only really like bothers me at a superficial level. So no big deal there. What kind of nostalgia buttons do the holidays really hit for you? Let me know in the community at element14.com slash presents. While you're there, you can check out the, um, the code and the uh, files and everything to build your own one of these. And uh, check out all the cool uh, tutorials, events, uh, contests, and so, so much more. Uh, my name is Matthew, and until next time, Happy holidays, y'all. Tally-ho.